Hey, shh, hey, you. Can you keep a secret? This is an audio interface. This is an audio interface too. You want to find out more? Then stay tuned. Hey there, it's Scott at the Pedal Guy. How you doing? Well, we're all about pedal demos, pedal knowledge, and pedal sales. I love pedals, and so do you. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use these two new X Verdugo pedals as an audio interface with your favorite DAW. Now, if this is your first visit to my channel, take a second, click on that subscribe button down there, give me a thumbs up. It helps me grow the channel and make more videos for you. Okay? Thanks so much. Now, if you're wondering why you'd want to use a guitar pedal as an audio interface, I got two really good reasons for you. You ready? Here's the first one. You're going to get great audio quality because you're going straight from the USB connection here straight to your DAW. The second, and this is probably the most important one, it's going to save you money because you won't have to buy another audio interface. This will do all the work for you. Have I convinced you enough? Let me show you how to do it. Okay, here are the two Verdugo pedals that can be used as audio interfaces with any DAW pretty much. Uh, just need to make use of the USB ports, which are found right here on the back of the pedals. Uh, you can see them in the upper right corner. This will accept a micro USB to standard USB connection. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is that you want to make sure that the cable you're using, the USB cable you're using here, is one that can pass data, uh, not charging. So if you're using a USB cable that does charging, like for one that you use for your smartphone, this won't work. You need to make sure that it's a data cable. So do make sure of that. Then once you have that, you connect it all up. It's just simply a matter of downloading a driver and then setting it up in your DAW. Okay, so before we start recording with either of these pedals, we need to go to the NewX website and we need to download and install some software. So once you're on the NewX website, you go to products, you go to effects, you navigate over to Verdugo series stomp boxes and download the software for the relevant pedal that you're working with here. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to make sure that you download and install the latest firmware. That's highly recommended for the best possible performance with the pedal. You also want to make sure you download the editor software, depending on which platform you're on. And you also want to download and install the ASIO driver if you happen to be on Windows. Now ASIO is a proprietary format developed by Steinberg and it stands for Audio Stream Input Output. So once you've installed that, then you're good to go. Now, if you're on Mac, you don't have to worry about that because the pedal is class compliant, so it's plug and play. You just simply pop it in and you're good to go. But you still do need to get the editor software and you still do need to update the firmware. So do keep that in mind. But once you've done that, you can now go to your DAW and start recording. All right, so assuming that you have uh, installed all the software for the Optima Air or for the Melvin Lee Davis preamp, uh, what you can do for a quick minute is you can open up the editor. You don't have to do this in order to work with these pedals as audio interfaces inside of whatever DAW you're going to work with, but I just thought it might be interesting to point them out really quick. So both of the editors pretty much look about the same except for a few color differences. So you've got your preamp section, your impulse response section, your output section, your USB audio section, and the USB audio section has three different functions for routing. You've got reamping, you've got normal, and you've got dry out. Now, for our purposes today, we're going to be using normal. And if you go to the gear here in the upper right corner, these are the settings where you can set up the uh, input and output for MIDI, uh, which we're not going to do in this case. But what it enables you to do is send MIDI messages to specific parameters on the Optima Air or the Melvin Lee Davis preamp. So once that's done, all you have to do is launch your DAW and you can start recording, which is what we're gonna do now. Okay, well, uh, I've got my Optima Air plugged in and I've got uh, it going off to my computer via the USB port here on the side, on the back, and then on the side here, I'm using the DI output that's going off to my mixing board so that I can monitor everything right from the board. But everything you're gonna hear and see is being recorded straight into your DAW. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so we are looking at Reaper here. This is the uh, DAW that I'm using. Now you can use this with, you can do this with any DAW out there. So Logic, Cubase, Pro Tools, whatever floats your boat, not a problem. So uh, what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna make sure that you're setting up what's called the buffer size. And that determines the real time performance of using your audio interface with a DAW. So in this case, we wanna make sure that we're making changes to 
the buffer setting to ensure the best possible performance of the Optima Air with Reaper. Now, in my case here, I'm using 128 samples, but you can see we have quite a large range here from eight all the way up to 2048. But I find that 128 on this particular computer works pretty well and it gives me a latency of around five milliseconds, which is more than enough, really, if I was gonna record, if I was gonna monitor in real time, which I'm actually not gonna do, but I'll, I'll explain that in one second. So let's go ahead and get back onto the main window here of Reaper. And now let's go ahead and create a new track. I'm gonna go ahead and expand that out. Again, all the DAWs pretty much do the same thing. You just need to figure it out and the methodologies by which you get to that same destination. So I'll go ahead and arm my track for recording. I'm gonna turn up my guitar. And you can see that I got a nice strong signal there. So that's good, but what you're also hearing is you're hearing some slapback. You're hearing that echo. And what's happening is, is that latency that, I, just, that I, I talked about very briefly there before. What's going on is it, the, you're hearing the guitar go through the uh, Optima Air, off to the DAW, process through the DAW, and then back out through the Optima Air. You wanna try to avoid that because it can get really confusing, especially when you start playing some pretty nice rhythms. So the way we get around that problem is we go over to the, what's called record monitoring. All the DAWs have this, and you just simply make sure it's turned off. So at this point now, all you're gonna hear, you're just hearing the Optima Air. Or if I had the Melvin Lee Davis preamp, you'd just be hearing the bass right now. So at this point now, I can go ahead and start recording, and I've got a nice strong signal. And also make sure that you disarm the track after you've recorded it. Go ahead and play it back. You can hear it for yourself. And that is how you use the new X Verdugo pedals that I've talked about here, the Optima Air and the Melvin Lee Davis preamp as an audio interface in your favorite DAW. So that wraps up our video on how to use these two Verdugo pedals as audio interfaces. I hope you got something out of it. We'll see you in the next video. Well, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any further questions, be sure to visit us at thepedalguide.com. But in the meantime, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and also, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for weekly videos and tutorials. Thanks for stopping by here at thepedalguide.com, where I love pedals and so do you.